We've been a leader in banking for more than 100 years. You'll find us here, at home, on your phone, and everywhere you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning and welcome to Daily Journal News Break, sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Today is Monday, October 15th, and I'm your host, Elizabeth Walters. We're going to take a look at today's top news and sports stories across northeast Mississippi, but first, a look at your weather forecast. Today, we'll have partly cloudy to cloudy skies with a high of 77 and a low tonight of 53. And over the next three days, on Tuesday, we'll have an 80% chance of showers with a high of 59 and a low of 47. On Wednesday, cloudy skies with a high of 67 and a low of 46. And on Thursday, mostly sunny with a high of 69 and a low of 53. And here's a look at some of today's top headlines. Lee County Sheriff Jim Johnson and Lee County Superintendent Jimmy Weeks have twice pitched to the Lee County Board of Supervisors a plan to put six new school resource officers into the district, but the supervisors have deferred any decision about helping fund the additional armed deputies. The presence of new SROs added to those already present would ensure a law enforcement presence at every Lee County school campus. The plan would put officers at Shannon Primary, Shannon Elementary, Saltillo Primary, Saltillo Elementary, Moorville Elementary, and Guntown Middle Schools. The proposal would have the supervisors and school districts splitting the annual cost incurred by the new officers, but supervisors express hesitation at the county tax increases that might be required. District 2 Supervisor Mike Smith feels the county school district should take a harder look at its own financial resources before asking for assistance. Estimates earlier this year put first year cost around $560,000, but revised estimates put the first year price around $584,000. After the first year, recurring annual costs for salaries and benefits are currently estimated at about $324,000. There's currently no plan for how to proceed, though supervisors have instructed Interim County Administrator Bill Benson to take a fresh look at the county's budget and examine various options to assist the school district. An upcoming recess of the U.S. Senate has reignited calls for a scheduled debate. Following a deal reached between Senate leadership, the upper chamber of Congress recessed Friday until after the number, November 6 midterm elections. This means Senators Cindy Hyde-Smith and Roger Wicker will likely be in the state during the three weeks before Election Day. When asked, Hyde-Smith campaign spokesperson Melissa Scallion said that no decision has been made about how the candidate will spend her time. Meanwhile, in a statement on his website, Chris McDaniel said that Hyde-Smith can no longer hide behind the veil of Washington to save her from facing Mississippi voters. Wicker also faces calls from his Democratic opponent, David Berea, to debate. Wicker's campaign manager, Justin Brazil, said, that, said last week that Wicker will not debate and has not responded if Wicker will now reconsider in light of the Senate recess. And as Gilmore Memorial Hospital in Amory is set to be auctioned next month, North Mississippi Health Services is looking to purchase. This comes as part of bankruptcy proceedings filed by Gilmore's parent company, Cure Health, and North Mississippi Health Services has been approved with an opening bid of $10.5 million cash. In an opinion column in the Monroe County Journal last week, State Senator Hob Bryan of Amory called for the creation of a community nonprofit organization to enter the bidding for the Amory Hospital. Bryan's fear is that if NMHS purchases Gilmore, services would drift from Amory to Tupelo over time and the medical community would shrink. Bryan said that it's not an attack on North Mississippi, but about a thriving medical community providing as many services as can be offered in Amory. North Mississippi Health Services Chief Executive Officer Shane Spees pointed to the medical center in West Point that has added in urgent care, reintroduced critical care services, recruited additional physicians, and expanded telehealth services as part of bringing long-term stability to community hospitals. If successful, Brian envisions a unified community undertaking with an institution in Amory, establishing a nonprofit, then tapping Baptist Memorial Healthcare to manage the hospital's day to day operations while the ownership remains local. And Baptist Memorial Healthcare confirmed they've had conversations about managing Gilmore if a community group purchased it. Potential bidders have to qualify and file with the bankruptcy court in Nashville by November 12th. If there are no other bidders, NMHS will win the bid by default. The bankruptcy court has set the closing date as December 12th. 
And in sports, Mississippi State and Ole Miss enter week eight of the college football season, both coming off of their first conference wins. After a bye week, the Bulldogs have risen two spots to number 22 in the AP poll, while the Rebels picked up a 37 to 33 win at Arkansas on Saturday. The Rebels return home this weekend to face Auburn, who lost to Tennessee last week. The Tigers are currently at four and three and one and three in SEC play. Meanwhile, State will travel to Baton Rouge to face LSU, who's coming off of a big 36 to 16 win over then number two Georgia. We'll have updates from both Starkville and Oxford throughout the week. You can follow Logan Lowry and Parrish Alford for the latest. And that does it for News Break on this Monday. Don't forget that this show is one of the many online offerings courtesy of the Daily Journal that gets you news off the page and on the go. Each story discussed today on News Break can be found in your Daily Journal or online at djournal.com, where you can find a new episode of News Break each weekday morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Elizabeth Walters. Have a great afternoon.